Jeremy Rifkin è uno dei più noti economisti del mondo. Nel suo ultimo lavoro del 2014, La società a costo marginale zero, spiega che si sta fermando sulla scena mondiale un nuovo sistema economico che prenderà il posto dell'attuale capitalismo. Motore di questa rivoluzione è l'Internet delle cose, ovvero una infrastruttura intelligente formata dall'intreccio dell'Internet della comunicazione, dell'energia e della logistica. Il risultato principale sarà una società più equa, basata sulla condivisione e sulla collaborazione tra i cittadini e un modello economico sostenibile dal punto di vista ambientale. Lei ha scritto nel libro che il nuovo paradigma porterà ad un declino del sistema capitalistico come lo conosciamo oggi, ma che fine faranno società potenti come Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Apple? What we're beginning to see with this digital revolution, this shift to an internet of things, communication internet, energy internet, transport internet, is that uh, capitalism's giving birth to a progeny. It's called the sharing economy on the collaborative commons. It's the first new economic system to enter onto the world stage since capitalism and socialism in the early 19th century. As it begins to create a relationship with this child it's given birth to, And as this child, this new sharing economy grows up, capitalism, the parents are going to have to change fundamentally the way it's organized in order to be able to benefit this grown up adult that's now side by side. So the bottom line, we're seeing the emergence of a hybrid economy, part capitalist market, part sharing economy. And by 2050, capitalism will still be here, but it will not be the exclusive agent of economic life. It's going to have to share the center stage with its grown up progeny the sharing economy. And the fact is, our young people are sharing everything. They're producing and sharing their own videos, producing and sharing their own music, producing and sharing their own news blogs, producing uh, knowledge for Wikipedia, taking open online college courses, and they're sharing with each other at near zero marginal cost. Whether you produce a video for one person or send it to a billion people, the marginal cost of sending it to a billion people is near zero. So we're beginning to see a new paradigm where we not only have sellers and buyers and owners and workers, we now have prosumers. Billions of people on this emerging Internet of Things platform who are actually producing and consuming and or sharing all sorts of virtual goods, news, knowledge, music, videos with each other, bypassing all those big corporations of the 20th century, and they're sharing these with each other at near zero marginal cost, meaning the goods and services are free and abundant and beyond the marketplace. It's a real revolution. Now, in terms of what happens to these big companies, many of the big vertically integrated companies of the 20th century have really been disrupted. The music industry, newspapers and magazines have gone out of business. Music industry has suffered. Book publishing is shrinking. Uh, television has taken a hit because of YouTube videos. But thousands of new enterprises have emerged to aggregate this sharing economy, not just Google, Facebook, and Twitter, There are thousands of profit and non-profit uh, enterprises that have created this sharing economy so that young people can produce and share music and videos and knowledge with each other. So it's very disruptive, but it's only the beginning of a great economic revolution towards democratizing economic life. Come cambierà invece la geografia economica? Quali saranno i paesi che guideranno questa rivoluzione? Well, clearly at this point, Germany is, uh, is uh, definitely leading us into this new revolution. So is small Denmark, so it shows even small countries can do it. Germany is far ahead on the energy internet. We have uh, 27% of the electricity now in Germany is solar and wind. It's going to be over 35% of all the electricity powering this country, solar and wind, before 2020. It's going to be 100% solar, wind, and, and geothermal, and biomass energy by 2040. And what's interesting, once you pay the fixed cost for these technologies, uh, and I should say those costs are plummeting just like computer chips. You know, a solar watt used to cost $150 to generate one watt of solar in 1970. It's 64 cents today. It'll be 35 cents in 18 months from now. In Germany, once you pay for the solar and wind technology, the marginal cost of the energy you produce, it's near zero. The sun doesn't send a bill over Germany. The wind isn't invoicing anybody in Germany. The geothermal heat isn't charging anyone in Germany. It's free. 
Germany's heading toward near zero marginal cost energy, which will make it the most productive and efficient economy in the world for its businesses and its families. The government of China to begin to uh, apply what I'm talking about so that China could be among the leaders of the third industrial revolution. $82 billion four-year startup starting this year to completely digitalize the transmission electricity grids to make them smart like an internet so that millions of Chinese people could produce their own solar and wind in their homes, their neighborhoods, their businesses and share it back to the National Energy Internet of China. So watch Germany, watch China. Professore, lei è consulente di diversi leader mondiali. Conosce bene l'Europa, conosce bene l'Italia. Che consiglio darebbe al premier italiano Matteo Renzi affinché l'Italia possa continuare ad essere un'economia avanzata? Well, when uh, uh, Prime Minister Renzi became president of the European Council during the six month rotating presidency last year, he asked me to join him in Venice uh, to declare uh, a bold new vision for what he calls digital smart green Europe. And so I joined the Prime Minister and um, at that time I made the point uh, to the press and the public that a smart green digital Europe is more than free Wi-Fi, broadband and big data. That what we are actually digi doing is digitalizing the three major components for a new economic paradigm. And all those components are the following. Every great economic paradigm brings together new communication technologies to more efficiently manage economic activity, new sources of energy to more efficiently power economic activity, and new modes of transportation to more efficiently move economic activity. When the Prime Minister called for a smart green digital Europe uh, and asked me to join him, I said, this is the broader framework. The next stage of the European journey is going to be a smart green digital Europe. Uh, I provided a memorandum for President Juncker, the new uh, president of the commission. I met with his leadership team and with Mr. Schultz at the parliament, the president of the parliament, his team, for all the 28 member states to lay out this infrastructure for an Internet of Things platform, communication, energy, and transport, so we can create a single, digitalized, integrated, single economic commercial space. So that 500 million people can have at their advantage a platform, an infrastructure, that they can plug into to dramatically increase their productivity, dramatically reduce their marginal cost, put lots of people back to work to create the infrastructure and create the new business models of the 21st century. So the smart green digital Europe is the economic paradigm for the digital generation. And so Prime Minister Renzi um, made that clear that he wanted a smart green digital Europe. And I'm, hopefully we will have leaders across Europe join together with the younger generation with the business community, with the local neighborhood communities, and began to lead us into this new, more ecologically sustainable and more productive economic system.